Chapter 6 Archangel Michael's Bedtime Story titled The Rainbow Channeled by Daniel Scranton Welcome We are here to serve and assist you We are the collective that you refer to as Archangel Michael. We are not an individual. We are a collective. And you are collective as well. We are very pleased to have this opportunity to connect with all of you and to offer to you our rendition of the bedtime story. We want to tell you a story now about a rainbow. This rainbow was created in the moment of a sun shower. on a beautiful day. And in that moment of creation, the rainbow was very happy to be, to exist, and to know itself as having so many beautiful colors all of which were expressions of the rainbow's true essence. Once this rainbow was created in that moment of the sunlight striking the moisture in the atmosphere. It always existed. The rainbow became self-aware. Aware of its beauty. Aware of its essence. Aware of its effect on the people and the animals and the plants who experienced it. And every time there would be sun and rain or even just moisture in the air, the rainbow could express itself. And it was very, very happy to be a rainbow. And one day the rainbow could sense that there was more. There was more to experience of itself. And so the rainbow began to question how it could express itself as more.
And the rainbow concluded that there were more colors inside of it, more colors that it could express. But it didn't know how. And it didn't know what those colors would be. And so the rainbow set out on a quest. First, the rainbow reached out to the sun and asked the sun about the new colors of its expression, what they were, how they could possibly be expressed by the rainbow. And the sun told the rainbow, I cannot help you with that. It's not something that I can do for you. It's not even something I can explain. But I do know this, if you go within and you feel for the expansion of what you want to become, you will become it. And the rainbow took this perplexing answer and pondered over it for many days not receiving much satisfaction at all from what it got from the sun. And so the rainbow set out to connect with the clouds because it knew the clouds were responsible for the rain and the moisture that would allow the rainbow to be expressed and seen by others. And the rainbow asked the cloud the same question. How can I express these new colors I can sense inside of me? And what are those colors? Can you describe them to me? Maybe if I know what those colors are, it will be easier for me to access them. And the cloud said to the rainbow, I'm sorry. I do not know what these colors are. I do not know how to describe them to you, but I can feel them inside of you. I recognize the expansion that you are sensing. And I know that if you are patient, you will have this experience that you want to have. And the rainbow did not like this answer one bit. And so again, for several days, the rainbow sat in contemplation of what the sun and the cloud could have possibly meant. And then the rainbow decided to ask a tree. Because the tree didn't have any part in the expression of the rainbow, but could experience the rainbow's beauty 
and essence. And so the rainbow thought, this is the being that I have needed to ask all along. And the rainbow approached the tree and said, how can I access more color? And you know what those colors might be. And the tree said, I do not know, but I trust when my branches are bare that more leaves will come. I feel inside of me during those winter months that there will be more of me to express. I feel that the leaves will come back in perfect timing. And I know that there is still plenty of me to be expressed. Even when I have no leaves on my branches. And the rainbow now was getting upset, depressed even, that the tree could not give the answer that the rainbow was looking for. The rainbow was so aware of how it was feeling that the next time there was a sun shower, the rainbow barely wanted to even come out and express itself in the beauty that it already was. And it continued to travel to different parts of the earth. And ask questions of the animals, the mountains, even the air. And the rainbow would get perplexing answer after perplexing answer. It didn't know what to do. It didn't know who could possibly help with this desire to know itself as more and to express itself in those beautiful colors. One day the rainbow could see that there was a spaceship flying through the Earth's atmosphere. And it thought to itself, finally, if anyone can understand this, it is the extraterrestrials. I finally figured it out. I just had to go outside of the earthly realm with my questions to get an answer that will be correct and satisfying. And so the rainbow jumped aboard the spaceship and met up with the extraterrestrials on board. And rather than asking them where they were from or any questions about themselves, the rainbow went back to its original set of questions 
that it had asked the sun, the cloud, the tree, and so many other beings on earth. And the extraterrestrials said to the rainbow, You are already so beautiful. Why don't you appreciate yourself as you are? Why is what you are becoming more important to you than loving and appreciating yourself now? We have noticed you over the times that we have been visiting Earth. And we noticed that when you first emerged as an expression in the physical, you were much more vibrant, radiant. Your colors had depth. You were very wide and easy for all to see. And now when we enter your atmosphere and we observe you during one of your sun showers, you are barely visible. And what's more, we can barely feel your essence radiating from you. We believe it is because you are caught up in a thought about these colors that you are wanting to express. We believe that it is your quest to access more color that is diminishing who you are in the now moment. And so now when we see you, we feel sad, not happy. And we know that it is not your intention to project that sadness. And now the rainbow was completely put off by this answer. The rainbow was angry with the extraterrestrials for being so honest and for expressing themselves so fully and truthfully. And so the rainbow leapt off of the ship and curled up and hid in a cave from all beings. It did not want to be seen at all anymore or felt or known in any way. And the cave was dark, and the cave was cold. And the cave was lonely. But it was what the rainbow had chosen for itself. It had chosen this experience. And it was stuck with itself. No one else to ask. It had already asked all of the beings on earth and so even the rocks in the cave had already 
served whatever purpose they could serve for the rainbow, was uninterested in connecting with any beings. And it went into a deep and dark sadness, went into a depression. It felt despair. It felt loneliness like it had never felt before, like it was disconnected from all other beings. And the rainbow cried. It sobbed and wept. And it felt sorry for itself. And it was angry. And it felt that anger. It was angry with all of the beings that it had connected to that would not give it the answer it wanted. Why can't they just tell me what I want to know? Wondered the rainbow. Did I ask the questions wrong? Were they spiting me? What did I do to deserve this, thought the rainbow. And even though the rainbow had never heard of processing emotions, that is exactly what the rainbow did. It processed the anger the sadness, and even tuned into some fear. Fear that it might never exist again in physical form. Fear that it might never know itself as the being that it could feel itself becoming. Fear that this was it for the rainbow, that it would somehow die in this dark, cold, lonely cave that felt almost like non existence to it. And then one day, a ray of sunlight found its way into the cave. And that ray of sunlight hit a drop of water. And that drop of water created a very tiny rainbow. And our rainbow, the rainbow that is the hero of our story, saw the little rainbow. And it ignited within our rainbow that memory of its birth, its first time of knowing itself. And it sparked within itself a desire to know this new rainbow. So it started to ask questions of this new little rainbow. It asked the little rainbow how it felt what it was like to be new and to know itself for the first time 
and the little rainbow was ecstatic. It talked for quite some time with the big rainbow about how it felt, about all of the beauty it could feel itself experiencing and expressing. Talked about each of its colors, the passion of its red, the calm of its blue, the peacefulness of its yellow. And how excited it was to simply exist. And to exist as something as beautiful as a rainbow. It was just beaming with pride. And this awakened within our big rainbow a recognition of that aspect of itself that still existed, that was new to being a rainbow, and that loved its expression of self, just as it was. And so our rainbow left the cave, saying goodbye to the little rainbow and thanking it for reminding itself of who it really was. And the rainbow went out into the atmosphere and waited patiently, trusting that a sun shower would come and allow it to express itself physically again. And the sun shower came, and the rainbow remembered itself and expressed itself fully, vibrantly, thick, big, bold expressions of all of its colors. And the rainbow was happy again just to be a rainbow, just to be seen and felt, to be experienced by others. Again, this was enough for the rainbow. And then once the sun shower was over, the rainbow wanted to connect with all of the beings that it had ever connected to and with. And so first the rainbow went to the sun and asked the sun questions about itself. The rainbow wanted to get to know the sun better than it had previously. And the sun was happy to talk about itself and tell the rainbow how it felt, what it was like to be a sun, what it was like to shine that light that allowed there to be earth and life on earth as it was what it was like to shine its light on all the other planets in the solar system as well. And the rainbow went and talked to the cloud and asked the cloud about itself, about what it was like to be a cloud, to provide rain so that everything could grow, so that there could be food, to feed the animals and the humans. And the 
Rainbow went and talked to the tree and asked the tree what it was like to be a tree. And the tree was so happy to express itself and talk about what it was like to be rooted into the ground, to provide wood to the humans who needed it, to provide shade, to provide a home to the animals. And it spoke on behalf of the fruit trees and the trees that would give syrup, the trees that bloomed in beautiful flowers, the trees that provided acorns for the squirrels. All of the trees were represented in this one tree. And the rainbow could feel that. The rainbow could feel how this tree felt connected to all other trees. And how that helped the tree to feel more of itself. And so now our rainbow set out to connect with the other rainbows. And it did. Just as it had connected to that rainbow in the cave, it set out to connect with all the rainbows and to feel them, to feel their wholeness, to feel how complete each of the rainbows felt to it. And the rainbow was happy. The rainbow felt fulfilled. The rainbow knew that there was more for it to experience of itself. And in the meantime, the rainbow was happy. Happy to connect with other rainbows. Happy to connect with all the beings of the earth and the extraterrestrials who would zoom by in their ships. The rainbow was beginning to know the fullness of itself through others and through the expression that these others gave it. And then one day during a sun shower, the rainbow appeared and it appeared with more colors than it had ever known itself as expressing before. And the rainbow was happy. Happy to feel these colors, to feel the expression of them for the first time. And the rainbow was even happy to know that there would be more colors to come. This time the rainbow could sense that it was becoming even more than what it was in that moment. 
and it was still completely happy. Completely at ease and calm. Being where it was, being able to only express what it could express. And knowing that there would always be more. And this rainbow continued to appear every time there was a sun shower. And some of the humans could see the additional colors, and others could not. And the ones who could would point them out to the ones who could not. And the ones who could not see the new additional colors would sometimes feel sad, frustrated. They would feel as though they were less than the other humans who could. And the humans who could see the colors knew that it was their purpose to soothe the humans who could not, to validate them, to have compassion for them, and to help them in the same way that the rainbow was helped by all the beings that it ever encountered. And this is the ending of our bedtime story for all of you. We are Michael. We are infinite. We are love. Hi, everyone. This is Daniel Scranton. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share this video, and give a visit to DanielScranton.com when you get a chance.